Hello, welcome to Santa School with Branch Davidians. I'm Ed, and I'm here with my wife, Mary. Hello, we're excited you're joining us today. Yes, thanks for listening. We present or expound on a principle or belief related to the SDA Santa School Quarterly each week. This quarterly is entitled On Death, Dying, and the Future Hope. This week's lesson is entitled The Judging Process. Monday's study is entitled The Pre-Advent Judgment and reads, quote, the concept of judgment before the return of Christ, or what we call a pre-advent judgment, is found in many places in Scripture. Close quote. Sabbath School Quarterly Lesson, Monday, December 19, 2022. Then the lesson discusses passages like Daniel 7, 9-14, Matthew 22, 1-14, Revelation 11, 1, 18, and 19, and Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Today, we wanted to discuss the fact that there are two phases of the pre-Advent judgment, as both inspiration and reason attest to. The two phases are the judgment of the dead and the judgment of the living. Obviously, if when Christ returns, his reward is with him to give to every man according to his work, Revelation 22.12, the living necessarily have been judged by the time he comes. Ellen also attests to this fact. She wrote, quote, as the books of record are opened in the judgment, the lives of all who have believed on Jesus come in review before God. Beginning with those who first lived upon the earth, our advocate presents the cases of each successive generation and closes with the living. Close quote, Ellen White, Great Controversy, page 483. This quote is featured in the Ellen White Notes for Monday's lesson. She also said, quote, Solemn are the scenes connected with the closing work of the atonement. Momentous are the interests involved therein. The judgment is now passing in the sanctuary above. For many years, this work has been in progress. Soon, none know how soon, it will pass to the cases of the living. In the awful presence of God, our lives are to come up in review. At this time above all others, it behooves every soul to heed the Savior's admonition, Watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Mark 13.33 if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. Revelation 3 3. Close quote, Ellen White, Christ in His Sanctuary, page 188. In both these statements from Ellen, and, as we said, from reason, it is clear that at some point the judgment of the cases of the dead would be all caught up, so to speak, and then the only ones left to judge would be the cases of those living. Obviously, if probation closes, when there are still people alive on the earth, then there is a point prior to the close of probation when the cases of the living are being judged. Now, it's clear from Ellen's statements that although she was shown that at some point the judgment of the living would commence, she was not shown when it would. And considering that when the judgment of the dead commenced, God informed his people who were alive on the earth at the time about this fact, even though their own cases weren't under review, and even though those who were being judged couldn't do anything about it since they had already died, wouldn't it be unreasonable if, at the commencement of the judgment of the living, God leaves the living uninformed? After all, their own cases will be under examination, and they'll be alive to actually make choices that could affect their eternal destiny, and could thus benefit from knowing about their own judgment. This is not to diminish the importance of the message of the judgment of the dead, but it is just to show by reason how important the message concerning the judgment of the living is to those being judged while living. Now, Ellen wrote, quote, In every age there is a new development of truth, a message of God to the people of that generation. Close quote, Ellen White, Christ's Object Lessons, page 127, paragraph 4. So we have to ask those who believe the teachings of Ellen White, whose message from God was given to people well over a generation ago, are you looking for the message from God for this generation? Those who are consistent in their profession to believe the teachings of Ellen White should be looking for the messages of God for this generation. Seriously, how could God just leave us without a messenger giving us his fresh messages of truth for our generation when the stakes are unquestionably the highest? Amos 3.7 tells us, quote, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants the prophets. Close quote. So, if this is the case, we would expect the commencement of the judgment of the living and the messages concerning it to be revealed to his servants, the prophets, too. And since Ellen didn't have this light during her lifetime, we should expect that God would have to raise up another messenger after her to deliver a message related to the judgment of the living. 
We believe just such a message has already come. We invite you to investigate this claim for yourselves using the links provided. See also our study entitled, Do You Know About the Judgment of the Living? linked in the description. Now to continue along this path of consideration, Ellen wrote, quote, The fifth chapter of Revelation needs to be closely studied. It is of great importance to those who shall act a part in the work of God for these last days. There are some who are deceived. They do not realize what is coming on the earth. Those who have permitted their minds to become beclouded in regard to what constitutes sin are fearfully deceived. Unless they make a decided change, they will be found wanting when God pronounces judgment upon the children of men. They have transgressed the law and broken the everlasting covenant, and they will receive according to their works. Close quote. That's Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 267, paragraph 1. Revelation 5 begins, quote, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Revelation 5, 1 through 3. Of course we know that Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, was found worthy to open it. Revelation 5.5 5. This scroll with seven seals contains the history of the world. After quoting these verses in Revelation 5, Ellen wrote, quote, There in his open hand lay the book, the role of the history of God's providences, the prophetic history of nations and the church. Herein was contained the divine utterances, his authority, his commandments, his laws, the whole symbolic council of the eternal, and the history of all ruling powers in the nations. In symbolic language was contained in that role the influence of every nation, tongue, and people from the beginning of Earth's history to its close. Close quote, Ellen White, Manuscript Releases, Volume 9, page 7, paragraph 2. The scroll sealed with seven seals is the book in which the deeds of mankind are chronicled. Ellen White again confirms this fact. She wrote, quote, Thus the Jewish leaders made their choice. Their decision was registered in the book which John saw in the hand of him that sat upon the throne, the book which no man could open. In all its vindictiveness, this decision will appear before them in the day when this book is unsealed by the line of the tribe of Judah. Close quote, Ellen White, Christ's Object Lessons, page 294. There are many parallels between Revelation and Daniel 7. They are both scenes of the pre-Advent judgment. Daniel 7 is a prophecy, and Revelation is, well, a revelation. Let's take a look at some of the parallels to show that this is the case. Daniel 7, 9 reads, quote, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, close quote. John's vision, the Revelation, also sees thrones. Revelation 20, verse 4 reads, quote, And I saw thrones, close quote. And as Daniel sees the thrones as they are being cast down or set up, with no one as yet sitting on them, John sees them with the 24 elders sitting on them. Revelation 4, verse 4 reads, quote, On the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. Close quote. Next, we have the Father taking his place on the judicial throne. Daniel 7, 9 reads, quote, And the Ancient of Days did sit. Revelation 4.2 reads, quote, And one sat on the throne. Next, we see that both Daniel and John saw fire mixed with water around God's throne. Daniel 7.10 reads, quote, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Close quote. And Revelation 15.2 reads, quote, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. Close quote. Next, we have visions of Jesus at the proceeding. Daniel 7.13 reads, quote, One like the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Close quote. And Revelation 5.6 reads, quote, In the midst of the throne and of the four beasts stood a lamb. Close quote. Then the books are opened in both visions. Daniel 7.10 reads, quote, The books were opened. Close quote. And Revelation 20.12 also reads, quote, And the books were opened. Close quote. And, of course, in both scenes, we have the throngs of angels. Daniel 7.10 reads, quote, Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. 
close quote. And Revelation 5.11 reads, quote, I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, close quote. And finally, both Daniel and John are shown that this is the judgment proceeding. Daniel 7.10 reads, quote, The judgment was set and the books were opened. And Revelation 14.7 reads, quote, The hour of his judgment is come, close quote. And Revelation 20.12 reads, quote, And I saw the dead and great stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Close quote. Truly, we can see that both Daniel 7 and Revelation from chapter 4 till the end are court scenes. And seeing that the scroll sealed with seven seals contained the deeds of mankind from the beginning of Earth's history, it follows that the opening of the first seal in Revelation 5 commences the judgment of the dead. The Lamb's act of opening the seals one by one started in heaven at the commencement of the investigating judgment in 1844. But the history contained in the book, and which is symbolized in the descriptions following the breaking of each seal, starts with the beginning of Earth's history, as we just read from Ellen White. Just to give a small taste of this subject, what we've seen so far indicates that the symbolism of the first seal must reveal the first period of human history. The symbolism, as you may know, is that of a white horse with a rider who has a bow and a crown is given to him. The symbol must, of course, be understandable in light of other scriptures that use the same symbols. For example, Ecclesiastes 10.7 parallels a rider on a horse with a ruler on the earth. This is a key for the first four seals where the horses represented the earth in successive periods, while the riders represent the rulers in those periods. In the first seal, the horse, the earth, is white, a symbol of purity. The rider must then be the first ruler of the world while it was yet pure, Adam. The bow can be understood by the fact that arrows are used as a symbol for children, Psalm 127, verse 4, making the bow a fitting symbol for a man's wife. In the first seal, the man with his bow was to go forth conquering and to conquer, just as in Genesis the first couple were to go forth and subdue the earth. We don't have time here to get into deeper detail of each seal, but we wanted to point out that John's revelation of the opening of the seven seals is a symbolic representation of the investigative judgment in the courts of heaven. This judgment naturally begins at the beginning of this earth's history and moves forward until it eventually catches up with the present, that is, with those alive at the time they are being judged. All Seventh-day Adventists should know that it was important for those alive in 1844 to know that the judgment for the dead had commenced. Otherwise, God wouldn't have revealed it. We should also all know that if the judgment for the living hasn't already commenced, we must, by the nature of things, be closer to it than the people were 100 years ago. So shouldn't we strive to know what God has to say regarding the judgment for the living even more urgently than the early SDAs sought to know what God had to say regarding the judgment for the dead? Prophecy shines a light on the path for God's people to follow. Without it, we are in darkness and could easily fall off the path and onto another one. If we want to escape the path that leads to destruction, we must follow the light given through prophecy. And as Ellen did not expound on every aspect of the Bible, including much of the book of Revelation, which contains the prophecies concerning the cleansing of the sanctuary so pertinent to our generation, and as she is no longer with us to expound on it, how are we going to get new light so that we can stay on the right path as prophecy unfolds. When is God going to give us messages that do expound on it? After probation closes and its light will be of no use for the path of the living? Or now? As we've already mentioned, we believe important light on these subjects has already been revealed, and God is still continuing to send more and more light to brighten our path. To investigate the light on the investigative judgment as depicted in the seven seals, please see the study to the seven churches, the breaking of the seven seals, linked in the description. And please also see the studies on the topic of the spirit of prophecy and the whole idea of present truth, linked in the description. Thank you for staying with us till the end. We invite you to visit our website, www.bdsda.com, to learn more about who we are and just as important who we are not. Please join us each week as we will continue to offer new and interesting insights 
or your Sabbath School studies. And if you want to keep up with our new studies as they're published, we recommend subscribing. We're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on plenty of other podcast apps. Links for subscribing are in the description. God bless. Many blessings.